Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Well, this is more than I bargained for. Somebody asked uh, to see the coral cobras and I did not expect the coral cobra to exit the cage and on the floor. This is why I don't normally take special requests because things always go off the rails. Yes, I touched you. Oh, now this. Alright, this was a complete disaster. When I tried to uh, I try to give you what you guys want to see. This is the female coral cobra. I've had her for quite a few years now. Uh, she's the mother of uh, the babies, which I'll show you in a little bit. And this is Viper Keeper's here, so she can do the camera work. Uh, she's a bit gluttonous uh, and likes to. Uh, oh, or likes. To, normally, she never doesn't drop her food. But this has a, been a very unusual feeding occurrence for her. That's my hand, leave it alone. Here you go. There we are. So this is a South African coral cobra. The Spitalaps lubricus. Oh, come on. We try to do something special and you're just being very difficult. So, Spitalaps lubricus, uh, they're an elapid. Their toxicity can be quite variable. Uh, I got bit by one in the finger, um, a different group uh, from what I have now. Uh, my finger just uh, was swollen and painful for a few days. Um, another person in Pennsylvania, did you spit it out again? What is your issue, huh? Um, boy, you have a malfunction today like you can't imagine. Come on, you're ruining my story. <laughs> boy. <laughs> do my snakes have malfunctions or do they, huh? Wow. So and she's dropped it again. Look, hey, don't grab the tongs. You can't eat the tongs. She wants the camera. You are just nuts today. So as I was saying before, she rudely uh, interrupted me again. Um, uh, that person got bit by a, the same species of coral cat called rub, however, its venomal composition was quite different than the one that bit me, and they ended up in ICU with full neurotoxic symptoms. There's no specific antivenin, so they just, you know, gave respiratory support and, and monitored them for a few days until things, uh, uh, sort of calm down and, uh, um, you know, settle down and they were discharged uh, with, you know, it was really sort of unremarkable. Come on, I'll let you eat the substrate, but I'm just trying to help you out. Okay, I got it out of the way. Yes, snakes eat substrate in the wild, so it doesn't really upset me when they, they get substrate in their mouth uh, here. She's going to come back after your fingers. Huh? Was that tasty? Huh? Hold the other corner with the other hand for a second to support her and I'll... Give her another one, maybe a little bit, a little bit more sizable. Is this more to your liking, huh? There you go.
so that's Mama Coral Cobra. So we'll close this and be done with her because she was a pain <laughs> in my butt. Uh, Daddy Coral Cobra is down here. It looks like he just shed. I sort of keep them separated because I don't want to breed Coral Cobras at the present. I'll offer him something later. There's Daddy Coral Cobra. And over here in the bins, we've got uh, some hatchlings that hatched out a couple years ago. This is the last pair that I have, so we'll stop the camera now and I'll just edit this all together. These are the babies that were hatched in October of 2019. A little big for you, but I, <laughs> you're going to go for it anyway. This is the male. Let him uh, do his thing. The female is right next door. I'll give her a similar size one. I'm using tongs because my hook disappeared from here. Oh, and you shed. All right, so we'll clean that up. Uh, yeah, that's probably what it is. Well, we'll look at uh, Miss Coral Cobra. Um, these are nutsos just like their, their parents. The, the dad is a perfectly reasonable snake. He very seldom hoods. Uh, I could easily uh, free handle him if I was uh, uh, stupid enough, um, but I don't. Uh, he's pretty gentle, pretty easy going. Um, as you can see, the these two inherited their mother's uh, traits uh, and such, so we're very careful uh, when we handle those guys. This gal you don't see very often because she's very shy. This is the female striped palm viper. Okay, give me back my forceps. There you go. Bothriatus marchi. Both uh, the male and the female are doing quite well. The female is a much more excitable uh, character as far as feeding goes. Uh, the male will usually uh, just uh, uh, strike and hold and not put on quite a show like a happy uh, death adder sort of show. Uh, so I guess we'll call this happy palm viper. So we will uh, leave her uh, a muncher meal and move on. So here's the painted lance head, or also known as Miss Bobbit. These are from coastal uh, Peru. I've had um, Miss Bobbitt since 2012 and she's produced a bunch of babies for me. Uh, Mr. Bobbitt uh, uh, passed away of terminal erection. Unfortunately, um, he had an erection that lasted more than four hours. It necrosed and uh, even though I had it uh, surgically cleaned up and removed, uh, he, he didn't survive. So. Bobbit is still around uh, after uh, 10 years. All right, here's uh, the green rocket, uh, who is obviously uh, very hungry after she uh, sadly dropped uh, a couple of dozen uh, uh, slugs and uh, some non viable live babies that were sort of almost fully formed. Um, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I'll get some success out of her eventually. Um, I don't know if she's doing, she's basically doing this on her own. Uh, she hasn't been with a male. Maybe I'll put her with a male and maybe she'll have better success. Because uh, she's just going to keep on doing this, uh, uh, reproduce and reproduce. Uh, uh, whether I put a male in there with her or, or not. I'll get her fed up in a couple of months. I'll put a male in and 
maybe next year she'll have some viable babies.